Hey there, it's Action Jackson, and I am excited to bring you another client case study. This time it's my client Lane, who's another no pack to six pack transformation, which is why I'm so stoked because this guy did it in only 16 weeks. Incredible transformation. Now Lane was a guy who was in great shape when he was younger. And like a lot of people, his job and the and his demands of his career began to eat away, not only at the time he would spend in the gym, but also at his physique. And before he knew it, the next thing you know, in his own words, he was getting fat. And his physique wasn't what it used to be when he was in his 20s. He had kind of gotten a little bit of a belly, and he was really lacking in muscle mass, and he just didn't look like the energetic, youthful, and athletic looking guy that he used to when he was younger. But much worse than that, he was unhappy, his confidence was lacking, and he also had zero energy. He was tired all the time, and he was eating whatever was in the way at work. He was just not tracking and paying any attention to eating healthy foods. He wasn't getting to the gym and putting in the time, and he wasn't happy with where his life was. But after getting a little bit of a break from work, when he earned his project management certification, he decided it was time for a change. And he came and he met me. And we worked together for 16 weeks, and in that time, Lane dropped 10 pounds of body weight. So his weight decreased by exactly 10 pounds. And here's the more extraordinary fact. He lost 16 pounds of fat off of his body. 16 pounds of fat, which is how he was able to go from no pack to six pack. But here's the even better part. He added 5.2 pounds of lean muscle mass during that process. So he simultaneously burned body fat and built muscle. Exact same time, incredible transformation. He looks like two different people in the before and after photos, which you'll see in just a second here. So I'm excited to bring you my interview with Lane. He's gonna get into the nitty gritty details. He's gonna talk about the workouts, exactly what he was doing, how he managed to schedule those workouts. He's gonna talk about the supplements that he, that he was taking. But then more importantly, in the strategy, he's gonna talk about the myth of perfection. Why it doesn't always have to be perfect. He's gonna talk about how he screwed up sometimes and how he was able to recover from that without spiraling out of control and without absolutely ruining his diet for the rest of the week. He even missed a few workouts, but he talks about how he was able to come back from those mistakes, those mishaps, and he was always able to double down, reaffirm his effort, and get the results that he wanted from this program. Just like my other interviews, there's so many golden nuggets throughout the entire interview. You're gonna pick up so many different tips, tricks, and even mindset tactics for your no pack to six pack transformation. So enjoy the interview with my client Lane. So you lost a total of 10.8 pounds, which is pretty incredible. Uh, your body fat went from 16.9% down to 7.1, which is like outrageous. Uh, you lost 9.8, roughly 10% body fat. Again, in 16 weeks, fat mass on your body, this is, these two next two numbers are really incredible. Fat mass went from 26.2, down to 10.2, that's 16 pounds of total fat loss, while your muscle mass, fat-free mass, went from 128.6 all the way up to 133.8. So you actually lost 16 pounds of fat off your body, but gained 5.2 pounds of muscle, which is like the holy grail, which is what everybody wants to do, but so many people find incredibly challenging and difficult. Those numbers are incredible, Lane. Why don't you tell me, you know, how does it feel you know, going from where you were to where you are now. Um, okay, yeah, it feels great. Uh, I was feeling uh, tired all the time. I was heading into my 40th birthday, and I didn't like how I looked and felt, so I decided to make a change. I had been in pretty good shape years before, and uh, I had a less demanding schedule, and so as my workload and uh, new jobs happened and uh, my day filled up. I found it harder and harder just to go to the gym whenever I wanted. And I was feeling like um, just going back without some direction was overwhelming and I wanted to have somebody just kind of come up with the workouts for me and just tell me what to do. And I knew if somebody was doing that, I'd just do it. So, so. so heading into your 40th birthday, was that sort of one of the main drivers for why you wanted to get started with this type of transformation? I mean, that's like a milestone birthday. It's just a nice, yeah, a nice um, round number, and I didn't like how I, I looked and felt, and I didn't feel old. I just <laughs> felt like I was not in the 
shape I knew I could be. And uh, I, it would be easy for me just to keep throwing myself into work. But I knew I was getting fat. <laughs> and I didn't want it to get, and I knew if I kind of got a grip on it now, it wouldn't be too much work. It wouldn't be insurmountable. And so I just decided to, you know. So in terms of working with me, you know, how was that different or, or better, or what did you like about that in comparison? Had you worked out with other trainers before, other programs? Nope, I uh, have never worked with another trainer before. You're the first one ever. Uh, I always have done different programs. Uh, and where did you get those programs? Uh, just, you know, whatever website or latest thing. I did a few, like, different books. I just, you know... Um, I was doing one particular workout, and it was all about, you know, progressive weight adding, and I totally jacked up a shoulder, and it, and so I stopped doing that. And, that yeah, that so actually I, happens a lot. I get, uh, you would be surprised how many people come to me who tried doing a program that was, again, progressively just building on weights and weights and weights, and then end up injuring themselves, and I've even done it myself, where all you do is focus on adding more weight on and then all of a sudden bam injury happens uh, and it's yeah. just it's just really frustrating then to try to overcome that and then get back to where you were so you were trying some other programs you ended up hurting yourself and when did you hurt yourself and 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 how did you recover from that messed up my shoulder maybe a year before eight or nine months before I came to you I'm and, sure that uh, probably contributed to some of the not working out as much and all the other stuff. Yeah, and mostly, you know, I just, I would go to the gym, but I never, I didn't have a plan. I was just eating whatever um, was at my meeting lunches. So it was pretty easy just to, you know, have a croissant for breakfast every day because they're all around and, you know, whatever was put in front of me. So I just didn't have a plan. Sure. And when you didn't have a plan and you left the gym, did you feel like you had, gotten a great workout did you feel you were progressing or what did you feel like well, I wasn't progressing towards anything or I didn't have any goals so uh, sometimes I feel like I had a good workout sometimes I'd just be glad it was you know I just checked it off checked off the box and moved on sure of course uh, yeah when you don't have a plan I find um, with a lot of people that I've worked with what happens is they leave the gym and they're like I, I guess I got a good workout and I do the same thing when I don't have a plan and I'm not you know, progressing in my workouts and I don't have structure, you kind of leave the gym and you feel unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. You're kind of like, I, I guess I got a good workout and there's really no progression from one point to the next, which can be frustrating and difficult, especially for type A people like yourself and me. Me. So how are the, how are the workouts different when you started working with me versus what you were doing before? Uh, the workouts were totally different. I always just did the four sets of 10 thing and so yeah your workouts are completely different and that was refreshing you know your workouts were great I liked that you focused um, I didn't have to run around the gym to get everything in each workout was kind of like in one area and and there was planning for that so I could just kind of set up in one corner and get all the things done the other thing is uh, I always was eat I always eat too much I always like clean off my plate so uh, <laughs> just like knowing what about what I should eat in the amounts that I should eat. It's fine, I'm good at following like rules, so if I know what I'm supposed to hit, I will. But I just didn't have any idea, like, you know, let's just eat whatever was put in front of me. I never tracked my macros before, so now I'm pretty good at it. How did you make those changes? So you went from not counting anything at all and just sort of eating what was available to now you're, you know, eating on a very specific regimen, you're eating specific macros. We did the macro tracking for you, so uh, I provided all those numbers for you, and you had those specific details, which is awesome, but there's usually a huge disconnect for people to go from not tracking at all to now I'm tracking everything, and how did you bridge that gap? Um, well, I just downloaded my fitness pal, like you said, and just started tracking it, and then I, uh, I mean, there was a learning curve. The trickiest part was either, like, remembering to bring a lunch to work, or we have several cafeterias where I work, so... I could make a salad and things if I wanted to, or uh, and they actually list all the macros uh, or their calories on most of the things, so I could get that. And then if I went over on one thing, I'd have to just change what I was having for dinner. Yeah, and um, the there was uh, also you know kind of working with what I had in meetings. I have a lot of meetings at lunch, 
that serve lunch. So, yeah, and I mean, I wasn't 100% every time. I just always tried to hit it as close as I could and not, you know, eat myself up over it. But. So how did you manage in those meetings as they're serving lunches? Did you eat? Did you try to find something that was available that you could eat there, or did you bring your own food? How did you overcome that? I, I did both, mm-hmm. and I tried, not, and I stopped eating like the cookies. When I was paying attention to how many calories and carbs are in a cookie, I did like, well. If I'm gonna hit it today, then I won't eat that. Did you ever get frustrated and feel like, ah, you know, I want progress to happen faster, or were things sort of happening in a manner where you expected and you were able to keep the momentum because? A lot of times people start these you know, ambitious programs where they're dialing in their diet, they're working out, they're going at it, and then they want to see results tomorrow, and it always doesn't happen as quickly as we want it to happen. Um, well, it, initially it worked, like I started getting in shape really quickly, and then I hit kind of a plateau, and that's when I started doing intermittent fasting. So I stopped, I stopped eating breakfast, uh, and I stopped eating at 8 p.m., and then I ate at noon. Mm-hmm. And I just had like soda water and black coffee, and that was fine actually. And then I'd have, and then I could have a bigger lunch and dinner. So, and that's when I started making more progress again. Nice. So, a lot of people when they first want to start with intermittent fasting, they kind of get kind of psyched out because they think, oh my god, I can't. I'm not going to eat food for so long. I'm going to die. I'm going to starve myself. You know, did you struggle with that? Did you you said you uh, you found it pretty easy? You know, I started uh, I started doing it one weekend. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, it was pretty easy, and so uh, so I didn't I didn't rush into it. I tried it a couple days on days when I'd have to do anything, and it turned out to be pretty easy. There's always like a point where you're super hungry, and then it goes away. Black coffee, cold water, uh, sparkling water yeah. helps a lot. And it was nice. I mean, I had more time in the morning. And I have a lot of early mornings, so I could get out the door a little quicker. Yeah, and then also eating bigger meals at lunch and dinner. Rather than, so I didn't have to be quite so careful about spreading out the calories. Yeah, it's kind of nice to then eat those bigger meals and feel so sort of satiated later in the day, isn't it? Right, rather than just fine. (laughs) I I definitely know the feeling. Um, So, intermittent fasting, we're doing hardcore workouts where, you know, the diet is on point. Uh, One thing that you said, which I kind of want to circle back to, is that you were perfect all the time. I think one. One aspect that people tend to struggle with, at least that I see with with people I work with, is they'll screw up one day and then it'll sort of cycle out of control because they're like, oh, I screwed up today. And then they'll just sort of go off the deep end and go down this sort of tangent that they never end up returning from or they end up doing a lot more damage than than they ever wanted to. How did you manage that when you might have had a cookie or you might have had something you weren't supposed to or you went over your numbers? How did you manage that? Well, I think that's where um, having a plan helps. Mm -hmm. You messed up this day, but you know what you have to do the next day. You know what your workout's going to be and what your goals are. for. So you just, you know, don't check off that day, but you you just pick it up where you left off the next day. If I didn't have a plan, like if I didn't know what I was going to do the next day, then I probably would just be like, yeah, whatever. But, you know, I always knew exactly what 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 was on the list for the next day. I think that that is really, really important because... Cycling down that that spiraling out, out of control can be really really difficult for people to return from so um, Did you have any cheat days or anything like that during the program? Um, I definitely cheated. I didn't have a cheat day sure necessarily, but uh, there's always um, Dinners out and things that were unavoidable. So I just counted those as kind of like my cheat meals ice cream sometimes uh, and things like that, but no, I didn't have any cheat days. I definitely didn't have any cheat days. I had a few like cheat meals. Did you find those were helpful in keeping you sane and keeping you sort of able to continue on the program? Um, you know, it's helpful because social situations require like things like that. Nothing has to be perfect. De- <laughs> definitely. Um, I find mentally you know, having one of those meals a week or, or whatever it ends up being is really beneficial mentally just to, again, socially, it feels like you're, again, connecting with people, you're going out, you're not you're not being the weirdo at the table, and then also right. just, yeah, go ahead. I will say, like, definitely when you're just eating whatever you want, it doesn't taste as good as <laughs> when you're being super careful 
and then you have like one almond croissant, it tastes way better. <laughs> if you're a little hungry, it tastes better. <laughs> that's that's the other benefit of doing what you what what you did is when you're eating clean and eating healthy, then when you do have that treat, wow, it tastes so much better. Yeah, and when I was doing intermittent fasting, lunch became so much better. That's a that's a great point. Um, supplements. Oh, what what were you doing in terms of supplements? So diets on point, workouts are on point, everything's going well. You're doing intermittent fasting now. Was there any supplements that you were taking that uh, you found helpful? Yeah, taking a pre workout, uh, two pre workouts, forge and. Um, the powder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll listen to the notes. Like, no way. Uh, so um, I was taking those two, and then BCAAs during my workout, and then creatine and protein powder afterwards. So, which I've always taken. I've always had protein powder afterwards. So, but the others I hadn't, and um, I still take those. And um, then omega threes and vitamin D, and um, then there was a little stack of vitamins to take before yep we were doing that we were doing the fat loss stacks we were doing some green tea extract we were doing some allison garlic and we were doing some um alpha lipoic acid which is very helpful for storing carbohydrates so do you have any sort of final tips tricks tactics or habits that you found that were really helpful and and keeping you Um, on track for this transformation well you know the tips i have are the same as you know Plan your day. Uh, did you your- did you schedule your workouts? Were, were they on your schedule? Yeah. Uh, well, um, they weren't in my calendar, but it was planned on. And now, actually, I did put them back in my calendar because I was having a hard time like leaving work. So things just get scheduled over it, and I'm like, you know, during my mental time. So uh, yeah, uh, I've started like putting in like a start or end date in my calendar so I just know I have I'm going to go to the gym before or after and that's what I was doing you know uh, I always knew that what I was going to do the next day what the workout was going to be even though I didn't have it in my calendar so much back then um, I because I knew what the workout was going to be and I didn't want to miss it I would go even if I was tired Uh, so did yeah. did you did you find there was days that you did miss the workouts, or were you always able to manage it? No, I, there were days that I missed it, but I don't think there was a week that I missed. I always made it up. Um, so yeah, I'd miss certain days, but I would make it up the next day, just follow it through. And if I if it was like it started on Monday and I did the workout before on Monday, then I would just start the next week on Tuesday, and you know, so I'd finish up all the workouts. I don't think I missed a single one. Uh, yeah. I, so, yeah, I missed days, but I didn't miss a week. So when you were tired and you found yourself looking at your calendar saying, okay, I got to go to the gym, what what was the mental process like that actually got you out the door to actually get to the gym? Was it just, it's on my calendar, I'll go? Was it refocusing on your goals? What was it? Um, well, definitely just, you know, staying focused on my goals, having being accountable to you helps. Of course, accountability is so huge. You invest in it, it's an investment in yourself, so you wanna see progress, right? You don't wanna just throw money at it and stay the same. So, uh, all those things. Uh, I, I wanted, this is what I wanted to have happen and I knew what it would take to get there, so I just stuck to it. And you know, you take your protein, you take your pre-workout supplement and get a little boost and power through it and then you know, you sleep better at night, so. Yeah, certainly the pre-workout does certainly help sometimes. Some days it feels like it's so necessary. Um, well, Lane, this has been this has been so awesome. I mean, your transformation is outstanding. I'm sure the people watching this are just going to be blown away by the results. I was blown away by the results, quite honestly. Thank you so much for investing the time, the money, and the effort into this program. And I really hope that the results that you got are just what what you wanted and what you expected. Cool. Thank you, Jackson. Of course. Absolutely. Um, any last thoughts? I just appreciate it, and I'm really happy with the results, and uh, it was a great uh, experience. Um, one last final question. Uh, have you found anything different in yourself now from where you started to where you are in terms of whether it's confidence? Um, you talked a little bit about energy, that you have more energy now. 
whether it's work performance, have you noticed any changes that the workouts, like unintended changes? I feel like I have a lot more, uh, I do have a lot more energy and um, I have a lot more willpower now to say no to the, a lot of the junk food that's around me at work before I just, I wouldn't even think about it. I just eat whatever was put in front of me. Uh, and so now I'm at, you know, I'll take a second to at least, you know, I'll think about if it's worth it or not. So willpower, energy for sure. I feel a lot healthier. Sure. Okay. You know, like and that, that helps. I feel more confident, you know, in myself. My body's better, stronger. All right, Lane. Well, we really appreciate your time, uh, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Holy cow, that was an absolutely amazing interview. There were so many nuggets of wisdom throughout that entire interview. Now, I would love to hear your biggest takeaway. What was something that you learned during this interview that you didn't know before, or maybe a specific strategy or tip that you learned that you can take away, you can apply today, tomorrow, or even this week to help with your no pack to six pack transformation? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Share them in the comments below, send me an email, connect with me on, uh, on the social medias, and slip into my DMs or something. But I would love to hear what your biggest takeaway was, and again, how you're going to apply it, how you're going to take action on it to actually go from no pack to six pack. Before I share my four takeaways from this interview, I just want to say one more time, thank you to Lane, thank you for investing in me, thank you for investing in yourself. I say it time and time again. I have the absolute greatest job in the world. I don't sit in a cube, I don't work on TPS reports, instead I help transform people's lives and I absolutely love it. So thank you again Lane and thank you to all my wonderful clients. I feel so blessed for all of you guys. Now next let's jump into my takeaways. The first takeaway I had from this interview was the power of looking forward and always moving forward towards something instead of actually uh, freaking out and sabotaging yourself based on past behavior. So Lane would say sometimes he would miss a workout, sometimes he would screw up on his diet, but he was always forward thinking. He'd always move forward, he'd brush it off, and he would jump right back into what he would need, needed to do in order to get the results that he wanted. He didn't dwell on it, he didn't beat himself up excessively, he just kept moving forward. That's an incredibly powerful mindset and something that you could apply today to help yourself reach any goal, but of course, no pack to six pack. The next biggest takeaway I had was the power of having a plan, but then also tracking progress towards that goal with that plan. So Lane talked about how he was spinning his wheels before, how he would show up in the gym, just do kind of whatever, or he would download a workout from online, just sort of run through that. I mean, maybe you can relate to this, but you leave the gym then and you sort of feel unfulfilled. You feel like you're not really making progress towards anything. There's no real goals, there's no plan, you're just sort of going through the motions. So it's no wonder that you're not getting the results that you want because you don't have any structure. So the power of a plan is so important to helping get you to your goals. So whether you create your plan yourself, you get one from me, you get one from somewhere else, you just need to get a real plan, not just one specific workout. So a real program, a real plan that's going to span the course of several weeks, several months. The next thing is you need to track progress towards that goal, towards that plan. Brendan Bouchard in his amazing book, High Performance Habits talks about the power of tracking progress. He says that high performers who achieve things like six pack abs, for example, they have a way of tracking progress towards a goal, towards an outcome with the plan that they're implementing. So not only do they have a plan, but they're tracking progress towards that goal uh, along that plan. And if you do this, if you track your progress, whatever for whatever, whether it's getting out of credit card debt, whether it's making $10,000 a month, or whether it's getting a six pack, if you track progress towards that goal, you're twice as likely to achieve it than somebody who's not tracking progress. So yes, the plan is important, but also track progress towards that plan. My next takeaway is that it's not just about the six pack. Yes, we all fantasize and we, we, we focus on the physical aspects, whether it's the muscle mass, the six pack abs, whatever it is, the bikini body. We focus on these physical aspects so much but it's not just about that. As Lane said in the interview, he has way more energy than he used to. His confidence is up. He feels stronger physically. Like think about how, how priceless that can be to have greater confidence, to have more energy, to feel stronger in your everyday life, and then to be able to apply that to all the other areas of your life. For example, your work. Like think about the financial impact that will have on your work. 
I mean, it's absolutely unbelievably awesome, but it really is priceless. I found in my own life and with so many of my other clients, they say the physical, yes, it's cool, it's awesome, like they love that part, but it's not just the physical components. It's about the mental components, the mindset, the confidence, that extra edge that they get when they get in a phenomenal shape. So yes, having a six pack is awesome. Getting compliments is awesome. All those things are great, but that extra edge that you get in life that's gonna help you in your work, in your relationships, um, in, in your fr activities with your friends, like all those other things. That's what really makes having a six pack so awesome. That's what makes it improve your life so much in so many areas because it just bleeds into everything that you do. From interacting with other people, to uh, taking on tasks at work, to personal relationships, to dealing with your family, your friends, your kids. It's really an unbelievable thing and it's again, not just about the physical aspects. And the last takeaway I had was the, the power of hiring a coach or outsourcing activities that you don't need to do in order to help make this process of getting to a goal, a, a very lofty goal, more achievable. So obviously Lane hired me to handle the diets, handle the workouts, to hold him accountable, to support him, to answer questions, to facilitate the workouts to him on an easy to use app. So he could just show up in the gym and he didn't have to think and he just could go through the motions. So whether you set that plan up yourself ahead of time so you can execute it along the way, whether you pay somebody else to do that, me, for example, maybe you pay another coach to do that. Maybe you, you can download a workout from somewhere and, and, and get that going, but you need to have somebody that you hire or somebody that's gonna set up all this structure for you. So then that way you can just focus on executing and then on top of it, having that support system, that accountability system is so huge. And you saw that with Lane, that he, he was so busy. He had other stuff to do. He didn't have time to build his own workouts. He was smart enough to know what he was good at, what he wasn't good at, and where his weaknesses were, and what was going to cause him to stumble. So he overcame those by hiring a coach. So again, it doesn't have to be me. It would be awesome if it was. But if it's not me, make sure you get support that you need in the form of a coach or a mentor or a friend or a workout partner, in the form of something that's gonna hold you accountable, that's gonna give you support, that's gonna help you set up that structure, that plan, so that you can focus on execution as you go through this journey. Those are my takeaways. I hope you enjoyed this interview. Again, I'd love to hear your biggest takeaway. I'd love to hear how you're gonna take action on it. So please share that in the comments below. Please share it with me. Please hit me up on social media. Um, just, just connect with me and let me know because I would love to hear from you. I'm Jackson. I'll see you later.